we want to look at uh, phrase structure today. Okay. Soon after discussing uh, components of uh, sentences at uh, two levels, first we looked at lexical level where we have seen words and then we looked at grammatical relations such as subject, objects and verbs. Okay? And then we, we, we looked at the abstract part of sentences such as the components that are responsible for agreement. Okay? Namely, uh, certain, certain lexical features like number, person and gender and then more functional features such as tenses and agreements and so on. Right? Then we looked at nature of verb in terms of its transitive nature and in, intransitive nature and ditransitive nature and we have seen that uh, we have seen that uh, sent the number of objects in a sentence depends on uh, verb. So, these are the things that we, we have seen and then finally, when we were, we were looking at some sentences yesterday, we tried to look at the fact that some words seem to be grouping together. Okay? In other words, besides grammatical relations in a sentence like subjects and objects, we have more to look at in the sense that each word in a sentence may belong to a particular category, but they do not have their independent status only, which is to say they, they make, a, make a block. And we want to see what is that block or that, that formed constituent mean what is its status, how does it work in a sentence. Okay. Do they really form a, do they really form a block, do they really form a unit? Uh, and then if, if they do, then how are they represented and how do they interact with other, with, with other units, that is other blocks and components within that unit itself. Okay. So, such as when we, such as Look at this sentence. When we, we talked about this, the fat monkey was jumping on the roof of this roof of this building. We are saying the fat monkey is forming a constituent, right? What what makes us think so that it's forming a constituent? If you if you just look at the look at the chunk, what can you say? Why do you, why why would anyone say that this chunk, the three parts of this phrase making a group together and each one of the each one of the three parts are not in association with other other units of this sentence are you with me do you understand the question why do, why do you why do we say that the first what's the what's the first uh, word in this sentence the right which category does it belong to it's an article, right? We call it article. Uh, why, why do we say that this word is part of this group? Not, not just because they are together, right? Is there something, something else going on here? The is helping in articulating which among the fat monkeys we are talking about. So we, we can say the has something to do with monkey. Right? It to be a specific, like you said, it is a specificity marker and it tells us among many monkeys, which or among many fat monkeys, which monkey are we talking about. Okay? So, that is the function of the. But more important part for us to understand here is this word is somehow related to monkey. Right? 
How about the second one, fat? It is an adjective. What is it doing in this sentence? What is it talking about? We know that adjectives describe something, it, it gives us some ad additional information. So, what is it giving additional information about? The monkey, right? So, the, the, the simple answer to this question that the words in a group are related because rest of the words are talking about one particular chunk, one, one particular thing in the whole chunk, right? And so, so which one is the most important part of this, this chunk? Monkey, right? Because without rest of, and, and the reason why we are saying it is it's important because without rest of the two, we can have monkey, but without monkey we cannot have rest of the two, rest of the two do not mean anything. Therefore, that is an important chunk. So, let us hang in here and we come back to the structure of a phrase in a moment to see, uh, see how, it, how it works. Okay? And similarly, uh, what jumping on the roof of this building is one large chunk which is predicate and all, but when we look at on the roof of this building, right? On the roof of this building, let us let's just look at this part of the chunk. We see that there are two parts, okay? On the roof, right? And of this building. If I give you the whole chunk together, which one is the most important part of this whole chunk? Anybody? Please look at the whole thing on the roof of this building. This is what we are saying is one chunk, right? Which one is the most important part? Like monkey was the important part of the first, first group of words. Building or a roof? If you are saying roof, you need to say why. If you are saying building, you need to say why. Go ahead. Because the monkey was jumping on the roof and we are specific to that. It, it sure, it was jumping on the roof. Roof of what? Roof cannot be hanging thing. Right? In a way, I am trying to answer your, your part. So, why is building important in this whole phrase? Because on the roof, right, in a way is talking about of this building, all right. So, the relationship between, see these two, these, there are two phrases in this bigger phrase, right, and one is related to the other one, okay. So, now, if you are looking at the first one on the roof, then roof is important because the is describing, the is talking about roof and on as a preposition is also telling us something about the roof. If you look at another, the, the last chunk of this building, same thing is happening. What is, what is this? As a category, anybody? This as a word, which category does it belong to? No idea? Let me ask you this thing again. You have heard this word, this before, right? Which category does it belong to? Okay, forget, forget about category. What does it do? What does it do in a sentence? No? No, it does not specify anything. It is a pronoun. Okay. What does, what do pronouns do? Substitute for each time, instead of each time specifying what the subject is, we use this to substitute. I mean, like so, what is this substituting the here? I mean, instead of specifying what that building was, you replace it by this. I mean, you might have specified it earlier or something. 
what what you saying is partly right okay but not in this context this and you are also right that it's a pronoun okay but among pronouns and and my my expectation is not that you you have a ready made answer to all these questions my my the reason why i'm asking you these questions is because you pay attention to these these uh, little things i mean i don't need to tell you i don't even need to ask you but even sarcastically then what does this mean right so all i am all i am asking you is that you look at these little things it's definitely a pronoun but it's a specific type of pronoun which is called demonstrative pronoun which demonstrative pronoun which talks about and and you are also right that pronouns usually replace nouns okay but in this case it's it's a demonstrative pronoun which is talking about uh, which 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 uh, helps us understand the directionality we are talking about this building not that one okay so but the the point so the category wise it's a pronoun it's a demonstrative pronoun it has a function all that is fine but it's related to the word building right similarly so on the roof of this building you see it's a large phrase of similar two two phrases of similar status but one is related with the other one right so words group together to make a phrase and phrases are related to one another in one way or the other they do not in in other words phrases do not have they are independent status so you you will remember this thing this, this is an important and crucial junct juncture for you to understand a sentence words group together to form a phrase okay and then such phrases in a sentence are not independent of one another they are related to one another in one way or the other okay so now uh before we move to the next next slide in the same sentence if i say if i tell you the let's let's look at the <coughs> whole phrase again on the roof of this building right we saw that on the roof is related to another phrase of this building now we are talking about one whole chunk on the roof of this building what is this related to in this sentence what is this related to in this building Is the question clear? People decide. Understand the question? Yes. No. No. So you 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 need to tell me. I can I can see that the question is not clear. You see, I am talking about this whole phrase. Okay, I'm talking on the roof of this building. And just now I told you that phrases. are not independent in sentences so if we have a if, the, if this is a sentence isn't it in this sentence this phrase is related with which component of the sentence the sorry the verb, the, the verb phrase right it the the whole thing is part of verb phrase but it's also related to the verb phrase and to be really precise in the verb phrase it's related to verb right it's related to verb so and and what is this related with the fat monkey is also related to verb right and what's the nature of this verb jump this a transitive or intransitive verb transitive or intransitive verb transitive verb how do you think it's a transitive verb it's not the we remember we cannot question jumping on what we can only say jump we can only question the word jump we can only question the verb jump with what can we question the verb jump with what jump what not jumping on what get it stand and stand up are two different verbs okay i'll i'll, I'll go to those things later so you after looking at every single word 
every single part of this sentence, how every single part is related to rest of the part. Is this making sense to you? Now, let us look at some more phrases and see how, we, how it works. So, see, when th this is what we have been looking at so far. When we look at the, the two words, the student, we know that this is forming some kind of a group, right? Because the, the words like the, a, some, two, these are all in a, when they precede a noun in, in language like English, when they precede the nouns like student, book, paper, pens, they seem to be forming a group. And in that group, the, a, uh, some and two are called determiners. The same thing you, you just now somebody said, articles. It's the, means the same thing, articles or determiner. Together, when, when we have a determiner and a noun, together they form the phrase which is called a noun phrase. Why do we call it a noun phrase? So, it should be simple. What is the, remember, when we were looking at the word the fat monkey, the phrase fat monkey, what is the most important part of this phrase? Monkey, right? The, the word that is most important part will head the whole phrase because rest of the components are related around it, okay? The has nothing to do with fat. Fat has nothing to do with the, but both have something to do with monkey, right? So, it is a, there it is a head of a noun and therefore, it is a noun phrase. S similar things you see, all the words are nouns, therefore, with the determiners, the phrase that come up is a noun phrase, clear? I am going to show you the structure in a moment. Now, look at this one. Uh, what is this? We, now we see call the doctor, uh, I am sorry, call the student. You see the, the, the noun phrase is now in association with a verb, right? The, the focus changes. What is the important part of this, this, this phrase? Verb. Therefore, it becomes a verb phrase. So, a verb phrase can have a noun phrase in it. Remember, just now I, I was telling you that phrases are not independent entities. Phrases in a sentence are related to another one. And this is how the, the, the whole combinatorial process in a sentence works. This is how we build a sentence. So, a noun phrase is now part of a verb phrase. And the whole thing is called the verb phrase. Buy a book, bring some papers, give two pens. Okay? Now, look at this one. You have just seen on the roof, you have just seen on the building, of this building. Now, see, again we have a, we, we still have those noun phrases that we started with like the students, a book, some papers, two pens, but instead of verbs, we have something else now, which is with, from, again with and by. These words are prepositions. We have, we have talked about prepositions and postpositions. Remember or not remember? Prepositions and postpositions? Prepositions are some functional words in a language like English, which precede nouns. If the similar type of element follows the noun, they are called postpositions, right? In a language like Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, words like with, from, by, they will be following nouns. Am I right? Right? What is the word for from in Telugu? 
how do we say from the book from a book what no telugu speaker here lovely lovely so how do we say the whole word, whole phrase from a book pustakam rundi rundi okay so do you see the, that word is following the word pustakam it's it's never going to proceed the now therefore our languages are post positional languages doesn't change anything it's just the position of the functional element is different okay so now it becomes the the fact that the whole np is part of a part of a preposition so as long as we have we are only talking about np that is noun phrase the head of that np is a noun right but in a in a in a prepositional phrase the head of the whole thing is a preposition so when we say with the students in this phrase what is important what becomes important and what becomes head of the phrase is a preposition okay and then we will see what's the relationship between preposition and rest of the rest, rest of the phrase in a moment uh, okay so you have seen three three phrases right noun phrase verb phrase and prepositional phrase likewise we could have more more phrases depending on the category right you also saw that what what's the important part of a phrase is what is it that the whole thing whole story is revolving around such as it, the fat monkey the monkey is important because everything else is talking about monkey okay now so the the way it works is the following now let me show you something on the board so so we see we have a we have a noun right this is a this is called a lexical item a lexical category right and then the moment it is it comes with a determiner right the the two things make a phrase all right which is to say and and the phrase is a noun phrase which is to say if noun heads the phrase it's okay that it has a determiner but a, but an, a noun phrase could be formed even in the absence of a determiner okay that is so if we have to say the boy is a noun phrase and if we don't have this if we simply say boys right we with no determiner it's a still a noun phrase it's a still a noun phrase okay and and i'm i'm, I'm going to show you more of this stuff so what's the okay let let's look at uh, we, since we are talking about phrases let's let's first talk about phrase structure rules then you saw that we have a, we get a we get a preposition here and then it becomes a prepositional phrase so we can say to the boy and it becomes a prepositional phrase right now you put another it gets a verb and it becomes a verb phrase okay so so far so here you have a noun phrase here you have a prepositional phrase and now you have a verb phrase so how do i close this thing should not be difficult so far 
Now, when we are talking about a verb phrase, it could have only a noun phrase, it could have more than a noun phrase, that is it may have more than one noun phrase, it could also have a prepositional phrase or maybe two prepositional phrases. On the, on the roof of this building, it may have two prepositional phrases in it, right? Jumping on the roof of this building, the whole verb phrase has a verb phrase and two prepositional phrases, right? Within the prepositional phrase, you see a preposition, a pre prepositional phrase on this building, on, on the roof, the roof is a noun phrase and on the roof becomes a prepositional phrase. We are talking about the same thing so far, but this is not a sentence yet. Why is this not a sentence so far? Can we say this is a sentence now? Even if we know some sentences like imperative ones, we can say give, give the book to the boy. Is this a sentence now? No. It, ha it still has something missing from here, which is another NP, okay, which is called subject. Okay which is now this is a now this is a sentence are you with me understand this without this thing it's not a sentence now we can pick Okay, we can pick where what kind of an NP comes here, but there has to be something here for this to get a sentence status. And these are the things that, that we have been talking about without these without this configuration. Okay. So, even when we do not say you and we just say give the book, we mean that this is here. Okay? We, have, we have a different sentence. Then something else happens. So far, now, now let me draw your attention to something else. You may have seen that the noun phrase becomes part of a prepositional phrase, the whole prepositional phrase combines with the verb and becomes part of a verb phrase, right? But there is, there is not anything what we refer to as agreement, okay? That takes place only between these two, right? So, if I say John give a book to the boy, is that a good sentence? John give a book to the boy, is that a good sentence? Yes? John give a book to the boy, is this a good sentence? Some of you are saying yes. The punctuation is correct and correct. Sorry? The punctuation is good, then you can say it's a good sentence. Right, right. I mean, so what basically what you are saying is your punctuation is correct. We are saying, John, you give the book to the boy. That is not what I am asking. I am asking, if I want to say, John, give a book to the boy, is that a good sentence? That is not. How will that become a good sentence? We need to do something here, right? So what is it missing actually? The agreement is not correct. That is singular noun, singular subject, there is no singular marker here or 
at least this does not does not reflect agreement properties taken care of. So, in the in the combinations of phrases, the, the how phrases are combined with another phrase is one part, agreement is another part which be, which takes place between these two. I do not think I am talking about anything new, we have already discussed this thing have not we? Yes or no? Right? So, this is how we get a full sentence and this thing that, that you see sentence N P V P right. So, we can sim now we can sim simply say a sentence is basically a noun phrase and a word phrase is that true? Can we say this thing? Then if I have to expand this I can say a noun phrase is determiner and a noun right. A verb phrase is if, if I have to give a description for this sentence a verb phrase is what? Verb plus preposition phrase right and a prepositional phrase is what? preposition and noun phrase right. I do not need to specify this again because it is already been specified. This is called what you have what you have seen so far is components of a phrase and this is if you put a sentence this way this is called phrase structure rules ok and it will vary depending upon a sentence right. For example, for this sentence or this structure that you see this rule takes care of everything. It will vary, but what is not going to vary is the is what makes a noun phrase, what makes a verb phrase, what makes a prepositional phrase. So, a prepositional phrase is always going to have a preposition and noun phrase or it depends, it may have something else also. Okay. But looking at the prepositional phrase, you can give a phrase structure rule. Right? That is how I, I just wanted you to understand phrases and phrase structure rules. Is it is there any difficulty here for anyone? No. This does not this does not solve everything, ok. In the sense that, ok, I will talk about what it does not solve little later. These are these are rules describing a sentence, describing a noun phrase, describing a uh, word phrase and a prepositional phrase, but this does not tell give you structure. In other words, it does not tell us how different components of a sentence are hierarchically related in a sentence. Everything do not everything in a sentence does not have same status. That is on a on a flat line we do see some some hierarchical stuff here, but not every hierarchy is clear that is not every kind of relationship between object and the verb and subject and the verb is clear from this. So, for that uh, we will talk about we will look at a structure and the reason why we are looking at a structure is structure tells us the hierarchical relations ok. So, so what I what I am saying is look at this. Uh, we have a determiner in a noun phrase and we have a noun. If you are looking at the linear structure, linear representation, linear order, then it looks like there are two components that is all right. 
it does not tell you and, and we know because determiners talk about the noun. So, noun heads the phrase and it is it's more important than, now, than the determiner because determiner alone may not make a noun phrase. These things, these, these generic descriptions are okay, but this does not tell us the status of components within the phrase or when they combine with another phrase, what is the status of this thing and then what becomes, what, what becomes the status of this noun phrase within this prepositional phrase and why does it need to combine with this, combine with that. So, these things are not clear from phrase structure rules. Are you, are you with me? What phrase structure rule simply tells us is it gives us a description. It looks uh, more fancy, right? It what we are looking at. If you look at this this sentence, sorry, these rules, right? These rules are mere description of this sentence. That's what I am telling you. Do, you. do you follow this thing? These rules are mere description of this this sentence. What it does not do is how is it, why is it that these two things need to combine and once they combine what becomes their status of a noun phrase, the whole noun phrase within this prepositional phrase is not clear. Okay. Of course, once we, so true, absolutely right, there is an implicit hierarchy that preposition is more important and noun phrase is not important, not, not that important. But then what is the relationship between the two? We, we, we can still, what you are saying is we can capture the significance of something of a noun phrase within a verb, within a prepositional phrase. We can capture the significance of a prepositional phrase within a verb phrase, right? Or a noun phrase within the verb phrase. But it does not tell us what, 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 okay, let me put it this way right now. It does not tell us more with what other kinds of descriptions, other kinds of explanation could tell you, okay. And I am going to show you, show you what are the things, what are other things that are more important to explain a sentence, okay. That, that, that is what I am talking about. Probably it is, it is hard to talk about what it does not do without describing what, what we get to do with other, other kinds of explanation. So, so please keep this, these phrase structure rules in mind so that we can compare what was, what, what are the things that this does not do, right. Now, before we dismiss this thing, we have just seen that and we are, we, we are not going to dismiss in the sense that it has no meaning. No, we are not saying that it has no meaning. It nicely describes a sentence and what it also does is it gives you the framework for generating lots of sentences. For example, this is the phrase structure for a sentence. So, all the sentences are going to have the same, same phrase structure, okay. As far as we are concerned here, all the sentences are going to have this. Then we, when all the noun phrases are going to have this, all the prepositional phrases are going to have this and all the verb phrases are going to have this. Whether all of them are needed in a sentence or not is not a restriction. A sentence may have simply a, a noun phrase and a verb phrase, right? And it may end here with an with or, or it just may end here. A sentence may not have a prepositional phrase at all. Now, the point is phrase structure rules help us generate lot of lot of more and new sentences. Phrase structure rules were also part of or are part of generative generative framework. So, once in, in the earlier days of this, this study, this was very prominent when people had not figured out more. By now, lot more, lot, lot more things have been figured out and we are going to talk about other stuff, okay. So, see, instead of representing these things in terms of rules, later on what happened was these things were represented in terms of structural configuration. So, look at this, how it works. So, the structure of a phrase is this way and then we will we'll stop. Each, for, 
the structure, the branching is always going to be binary. Okay? The branching is always going to be binary. So, here is your determiner and bear with me because we, we want to keep the structure only binary. So, there, there was an intermediate category created okay? and then we have Let me, let me put it this way for a moment. Are you, are you with me? Do you see, see this structure? We are, we are almost doing the same thing here. We are almost trying to do the same thing. But we are putting this thing in terms of structural configuration. For that structure, the branching is only and always binary. Okay? So, we can say, we can see, we can, we could have also said that look, determiner and noun here, end of the story, right? But if we do that, then this, let us, let us put it here. If we do this, right, then there is no other way for expanding this phrase, okay? No other way to expand this phrase. This is this becomes a closed phrase. What this kind of to in order to expand this phrase, an intermediate category was created. This is called n prime or n bar. Okay, it helps us branch further, and this becomes the head position in a phrase. So, this position is called where, where we get a, a specifier, sorry, the, where we get determiner, this position is called specifier position in which we get determiner. This position is called head position in which we get the main component of the phrase and this position is called a complement position. Okay? So, the idea is in retaining the head of the phrase, we need to have these two things. Give me, give me a couple of more minutes to show you why and how. Okay? Now, look at the, also this is going to be the, the blueprint of structure of phrases. We talk about any phrase, whether we are talking about a prepositional phrase, we are talking about a verb phrase, we are talking about entire sentence. Okay? This is going to be the structure of a phrase. In every phrase, we are going to have a specifier and head and a complement. In every phrase, we are going to have specifier head and a complement. Okay? Now, if we want to look, now we want to look at a prepositional phrase. Okay? A prepositional phrase. How do we represent a, a prepositional phrase in this structure? Sorry? Right, but how, okay. First, first let us, you are right that we will add here, true, but we will we'll see that addition in a moment. Just give me, give it, give it to me here. I have a, okay, is, is this clear that bi, binary branching in this term is not giving us expanding freedom, therefore an intermediate category so that we can branch further. Uh, let me show you a prepositional phrase. So, this is how a prepositional phrase works. Remember, this is a blueprint of a phrase. So, we are going to have specifier and here we are going to have what? P prime, right? And then P and this place is going to be for complement. Okay? So, 
what is the what is the preposition in this phrase to the boy what is the preposition to. So, that comes here heading the phrase in the the boy we have the and boy right we had a determiner that is a specifier in the prepositional phrase you do not have a specifier. So, this position stays empty we have a head preposition comes here and then the in the complement position we have an NP which is the boy the boy right. Now, this NP position is going to be expanded again this way this I think Pavan this is what you were talking about it will add. So, if you bring this NP position here then you see the structure of a prepositional phrase see this thing. Now, this kind of addition or expansion will not be possible if we did not have this intermediate category. So, I am I am purposely emphasizing on this intermediate category since so the, the sole reason for this intermediate category to bring in hypothetically a space for retaining binary branching and creating a space for further addition right. I will talk about the, the nature and the relationship between head and the complement and head and the spec a specifier uh, in a day or so, but right now I only want you to see that the structural config is struck in a structural representation the configuration is always binary the branching is always binary we retain it by introducing an intermediate category we have a phrase and we have a category you see this we have a category preposition and then we have a phrase prepositional phrase this thing is not really needed this does not mean anything but we created this thing just to retain binary branching and then what is more important is the relationship between specifier and head and head and complement. This gives you this kind of hierarchy and relationship comes becomes clearer and the discussion becomes re more relevant when we look at these relations. Final thing which we will and this is where we will start from tomorrow that the the blueprint is always like this phrase intermediate category and head complement and sorry specifier and the complement. And whether we are talking about a noun phrase or a prepositional phrase since it is going to retain this way a verb phrase will work exactly like this way. So, this whole phrase whole structural representation of phrase is called x bar theory x bar theory since it is a 1 prime. So, sometimes this this thing is equated as 2 prime ok. So, when you put 2 primes it means NP. So, the idea is 0 1 2 whether we say NP or N double bar it is the same thing. So, this this whole structural notion the this whole notion of a structural representation is called x bar theory because in that x you can put any any category and get the structure more on this tomorrow we have a class waiting please look at this thing please look at this thing it is it is in the first chapter of the book now now we are we have moved or you have moved from introduction the whole thing is described uh, in that book too ok.